Assalamu alaikum. Welcome. Lisanul Quran, easier than English, lesson 9. Did you know that there is no word in the Arabic language for OF? For example, when I say the house of Hamid, of course, we can also say Hamid's house. This relationship between these two words in English, we do normally do it by putting OF in between two nouns. Now, in Arabic, it's completely different. We need to understand the structure called Al Idafa, which has two parts, Mudaf and Mudaf Ilayhi how they are put together and this is the detail that we need to understand without which really we can't make any significant progress in quranic arabic it is one of the most common structures that you're likely to come across in the quran in fact i believe on almost every line or other line we will see some mudaf mudaf ilahi so the subject is a little bit more detailed it has a lot more information than the other construct that we looked at so far but inshallah i ask the help of allah azza wa jal to give me the ability to make this subject really simple for you and in a systematic way. So in the first lesson, lesson number nine, on the subject of Idafa, I'm going to introduce the topic, explain the two parts, and I'm going to show you different constructs using different types of isms that we have done, like we've done the same approach with the other subject, inshallah. All you really need to do is make some notes and inshallah, use those notes to further develop. In the next lesson, inshallah, we look at more complex structure of the Idafa. So let's begin by seeking the divine help of Allah Azza wa Jal. To seek his protection, we ask for his forgiveness and his mercy. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make things easy for us. Let's begin in his blessed name. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. What is the Idafa? Firstly, let's take a quick look at the map of where we are as far as our studies are concerned. Alhamdulillah, in the previous two lessons, we've looked at the prepositional phrase in some detail. Alhamdulillah, I'm quite confident that all the major information that you need regarding this topic has been covered in the last two lessons. Of course, we'll look at more complex structures later. This lesson, inshallah, we're going to now start looking at the possessive phrase, which is called the murakab idafi. We've also looked previously at some examples of the descriptive phrase. Of course, we are familiar with the jumla ismiya, is basic level at least, inshallah. So this is where we are. We're making very good progress, inshallah ta'ala, in our study. Now we're going to focus on the murakab idafi. And inshallah, once we've done Murakkab Idafi, we will now then be able to look at any line of Quran and at least identify significant parts that we can understand. So what is the Idafa? Let's look at two words, Baitun and Mu'allimun. Now Baitun means house, I'm sure you know, and Mu'allimun means a teacher. I'm sure you're familiar with those two terms. Now in Arabic, I want to say the house of the teacher. It's exactly the same thing in English saying the teacher's house. I'm sure you agree with this, that there are two almost identical in meaning. The house of the teacher, the teacher's house. So I got two words here, baytun, mu'allimun. Baytun we already know, mu'allimun we already know. So how do I put them together to say the house of the teacher? This is called the idafa. Idafa has two parts. So in Arabic, if I wanted to say the teacher's house or house of the teacher, I will say baytul mu'allimi. Please pay attention to the structure now. Baytul Mu'allimi. So that will be translated as the house of the teacher or the teacher's house. So this is the idafa. It's made out of two isms that are interrelated with each other. They've come together to form this murakkab, which is called the incomplete construct. Now, please note that there is no word in the Arabic language for OF. We get this from the idafa. We translate it with OF if it is necessary in the English language or apostrophe S is another example. So the word idafa literally in Arabic means addition, annexation, and it's really to indicate possession between two things. So this is the idafa. In terms of the construct, it can be named as murakkab idafi, or you'll see it as al-idafa, or mudaf, or mudaf ilayhi, based upon the two parts of it. So this is the introduction, some of the terminology. Please don't worry about it. Our, our goal is to understand the construct and to recognize it. We'll learn the terminology later, inshallah. So on the screen, I have some examples of the idafa or murakkab idafi. First one I have, I'm sure you can all recognize is Rabbil Alameen. That actually is translated as Lord of the Worlds. Lord, the Lord of the Worlds. Then we have Maliki Yawmiddin, again from Surah Al-Fatiha, Master of the Day of Judgment. So you can see two OF there in the translation. But as you can look in the Arabic, inshallah, I'm sure you can recognize that there are only three words so we have word one here word number two and word number three where are the words of of in this translation we, you cannot see it in the arabic 
Then I have Kitabullahi and we have the book of Allah or Allah's book. Again, just to illustrate that you can use an apostrophe S to translate. Sometimes in English, it's not obvious that it is actually that kind of relationship. For example, if I, if I say Mu'allimul Madrasati, Mu'allimul Madrasati, please pay attention to that. I will translate as the school teacher. The school teacher. Here, of course, I put in bracket the teacher of a school. But literally, I'm saying the school teacher. So in English, sometimes you not even need the word OF. And it looks like a title, for example, the school teacher, Mu'allimul uh, Madrasati. You don't need the word OF. Two more examples I have here. Amam al Masjidi. Amam al Masjidi in Arabic will be translated as front of the mosque. If I then said in Arabic, Khalf al Masjidi, it will be translated as behind of the mosque. Now you don't say behind of the mosque in English. So again, I'm just trying to illustrate to you that not always you will get the OF translation. In English, you don't say behind of the mosque. For example, I say to you, brother, after the Salah and Juma, I'll meet you in front of the mosque. Uh, or I, do, I don't say to you, I'll meet you behind of the mosque. I'll say I'll meet you behind the mosque, meaning the exit at the back end of the masjid. So again, you can see in English, at one time I need off and the other time I don't. For example, I say top of the table. I don't say under of the table, right? I say under the table. So this is to do with the English language, but the struct construct in Arabic is exactly the same. So for us, it's more important to understand the construct, recognize it, that it is the al-idafa, then it is really to worry about the English translation that will come based upon the rules of the English language, which we are already familiar with. So when to use off and when not to use off, that is your choice as an English speaker, when it's required. But in Arabic, this is the construct. It's called the idafa. The idafa can also be used to show relationship. For example, here I have Rasulullahi, the messenger of Allah. But in the next one, I have Rasuluhu, his messenger. So in Arabic, again, it is also the idafa. In one, I'm using pronoun. In the other one, I'm using a proper noun. Nonetheless, the structure is exactly the same in the Arabic language. So you can use a pronoun or you can use a normal or proper noun or any other types of nouns that we are familiar with as the construct allows. So those examples we've just seen were all examples of the idafa. In the grammar books you will find it's called murakkab idafi. It's also called mudaf or mudaf ilayhi or al idafa. I've just chosen this simple name because of course my aim always is that I'm not here to teach you terminology. I want you to understand what's going on. So again, the terminology in English books, English books for learning Arabic could be the genitive phrase, the possessive phrase, possessed and the possessor. All of these terms, I believe, was going to cause you more confusion than shed light. So simply, we're going to call this construct the idafa. All I want you to remember is that it has two parts. It has two parts, the first part and the second part. The first part is called mudaf and the second part is called mudaf ilayhi. That's all I need you to remember at this stage, that it is called uh, the idafa has two parts, mudaf, mudaf ilayhi. Just like the examples we've seen so far, muttad and the khabar, subject predicate. We've seen murakkab jari, which has the harf of jar and the ism majroor, they come together to form the murakkab jari. This one needs these two parts. It is very important to note that these two parts are always together. There is no gap allowed in between, meaning another word cannot slip in between them. So they will always be together, just like the murakkab jari, the harf of jar, immediately followed by ism majroor. Whereas with the adjective phrase, other things can come in between. But here, they are strictly followed, mudaf, mudaf ilayhi. So this is the construct and in putting it together correctly, we end up with the translation, house of the teacher or the teacher's house baytul muallimi and we're going to learn inshallah ta'ala what the rules are for the two parts to come together correctly so you can recognize them and translate them from arabic to english or more importantly you can also form them yourself mudaf ilayhi let's look at the second part first and then we'll go to the first part in more detail we have two words here muallimun and baytun we've already seen and again the translation is there for you now to note here, very, very important, the mudaf, which is the first part, cannot have al or tanween. Just remember those two points for now. Inshallah, we're going to look at it in a bit more detail later on. So mudaf cannot have al. If you see a word with al, it cannot be mudaf. Or it, if you see a word with tanween, it cannot be mudaf. So this is two th conditions of the mudaf. As far as the mudaf ilahi is concerned, it's a very simple rule. It has to be in jar status. It has to be jar. It cannot be nasab, it cannot be rafa, it cannot be anything but jar. So this is the important thing to remember about the second part, which is the one we're going to look at. So you have your mudaf and your mudaf ilayhi. 
the mudaf we will look at in detail later you will note that there is no alif lam here there's no al and there is no tanween if it doesn't have these two conditions it is not mudaf as far as you and i are concerned for now so mudaf and the mudaf ilahi always has to be in the jar status jar not anything else jar always always in jar if you remember that inshallah ta'ala in the previous lesson we found it is jar when there is a harf of jar before and now we see when is mudaf ilahi these are the only two conditions in arabic where an ism will be in jar status no other that's it so inshallah we're going to now end up uh, by the end of this sessions to be able to recognize the uh, anything with jar in arabic inshallah and to know that's either one or the other i have two texts on the screen for you the first one says a teacher's house to say that in arabic i will say baitu muallimin i hope you can easily recognize the first one has no tanween or al and therefore it is my mudaf and then we have muallimin muallimin is my mudaf ilayhi which has to be in the jar status we are going to be taking a closer look at the second part now so please pay attention here so we have here muallimin which is your jar status the next text i have is the teacher's house the teacher's house now here i i will say baitul muallimi baitul muallimi so baitu and al muallimi so you can see that here the first part is mudaf no tanween no al and then we have our mudaf ilayhi which has al and at the end it has a kasra because it has to be in the jar status mudaf ilayhi is always always jar there is no exception now here is the point that i want you to note if the mudaf ilayhi which is here is indefinite indefinite then you'll translate the construct as indefinite as i have done here a teacher's house if on the other hand the mudaf ilayhi is definite why because it's got al al then you'll translate the whole construct as definite the teacher's house i'm sure you can work out in english what's the difference between a teacher's house and the teacher's house i hope that's easy for you inshallah so you can see here baitul muallimi baitul muallimi is definite muallimin is indefinite why is very obvious it is not uh, does not have al it's not a proper noun it's not a pronoun and it's not a, one of those pointing words the things that i asked you to remember right at the beginning of the course inshallah when i went through the definiteness in arabic so very very important uh, for you to note that so please note the text is here for you to remind if the mudaf ilayhi is indefinite then the whole thing you can translate as indefinite if on the other hand the mudaf ilayhi is definite then you'll translate the whole thing as definite because the mudaf cannot be uh, with tanween and cannot be with al so here i cannot say al baitu in the second one it will be completely wrong even though i'm saying the teacher's house so please note that very very important point the mudaf ilayhi can be definite or indefinite always jar if it's definite you translate the whole thing as definite if it's indefinite you translate the whole thing as indefinite as your general rule this will help you avoid confusion on how to translate it if you go back now i think lesson number two when we dealt with definiteness remember i mentioned to you there are seven categories of isms that are definite if you remember that inshallah and i went through the first four with you and i said leave the others and we will go through them in detail now you've got your seventh one seventh one so let's go through them very quickly we have the proper noun always definite pronouns are always definite and any word that has al on it is always definite al at the beginning just like in english the then we have the pointing was demonstrative then we have the relative nouns like alladhi and alladhina then the one being called the seventh one is called related to a definite okay al mudafu ila ma'rifa what do i mean by that if i say pen it means any pen right any pen but if i say the student's pen even though the word pen is indefinite i'm relating it to the student it will become definite and exactly the same thing we have here the word house bait means any house but baitul muallimi means that the teacher's house so i'm talking about a specific house even though the word house itself on its own means that it is any house and this is means uh, that it is related to something definite and that is your seventh category of definiteness that we went through in lesson number two now i hope inshallah ta'ala that point is now clear and then i hope you realize why why i didn't tell you that in lesson number two otherwise you would have been confused now you know that that is the mudaf ilayhi is being definite then the mudaf will be also treated as definite because it is now related 
to something definite. So that's your seventh category of definite is when the mudaf ilayhi is definite. So going back to the rules of mudaf ilayhi, again, please remember it is always, always in jar. There is no exception to this rule. It can be definite or indefinite. If it is indefinite, you'll translate the whole thing as indefinite. If it's definite, you'll translate the whole thing as definite. Again, the mudaf ilahi is always in the jar status. So you can be 100% sure that this will always be in the jar status. So this is all you need to remember about the mudaf ilahi. Now let's translate some text here I have. The well, first one is Hamid's house. Then I have Ibrahim's house. Then I have Musa's house. Three names which you're familiar with. Now here, I haven't put the endings in. I just want you to work out what's going on here. So please complete these remembering the basic rules I've given you and then come back. So let's go through them. First, we have Hamid's house. I hope you've worked out very easily. It will be Baitu and it will be Hamidin. Baitu Hamidin. I hope that's easy for you to work out. Next, we have Ibrahim's house. So again, we have Baitu, no Tanwin or Al. Ibrahim, will it be Ibrahimi? No, why not? Because it is partly declining. So it has to be Ibrahima. And what about Musa? Well, we say Baitu, Musa. There's no change. Why? Because if you note at the end of it, we have an Alif Maksura and we mentioned that these words do not change. Okay, these words do not change. So in Rafa Nasab and Jar, they'll be exactly the same. The point here for you to note and for me to note is that in all these circumstances, this is definitely in Jar status. This is jar and this is jar. So please remember this very important point. Mudaf ilahi is always jar and it will change according to the category of isms. And we've been through this in detail in lesson number six. We also went through it ever since. So please pay attention to these points. Inshallah, it is still mudaf, mudaf ilahi, and it is definitely jar. And the first word has no alif lam or tanween. Now we have three more constructs that we need to look at. We have the house of the two teachers the house of the teachers, three or more, and then we have the house of the teachers, feminine. How do we do this in Arabic? To so take a look at this, inshallah, see if what I've written is correct. If not, well, how it should be corrected. So the first one, two teachers in Arabic is muallimani. I hope that you will work that out, inshallah ta'ala. If you're having any problems here, you need to go back to the Muslim table. So baitu. Muallimani is what status? Rafa nasaburjar. Go back to the Muslim table. It is Rafa. So it cannot be. So what, we, what do we need to put here? We need to say Mu'alli Maini. Okay, Maini. So this is very, very important. Baitul Mu'alli Maini. That should be the correct way of writing that down. I hope you worked it out because it has to be Jar. The house of the teachers. The teachers is correct. Al Mu'allimuna. But if you go back to the Muslim table, that is Rafa. We cannot have that here. Has to be Jar. So what is our Jar version? Mu'allimina. So we need to cross this off and change the ending to Baytul Mu'allimina. I hope you got that correct, inshallah. Last example we have is Bayt, then Al Mu'allimatu. We want to say the house of the female teachers, plural teachers. So again, Al Mu'allimatun. If you go back to the Muslim table, you'll see Mu'allimatun is Rafa. Al Mu'allimatu is also Rafa. But here it's took out to be Jar. So it has to be Baytul Mu'allimati. And here I've got the corrected answers for you just in case the previous slide was not clear. This is what you should have ended up with. Again, remember the Mudaf has no Alif Lam or Tanween. And the mudaf ilahi has to be in jar status. So in the previous slide, we had uh, Hamid, Ibrahim and Musa, where we've illustrated the fully, partly and the non-declining words. And here you have your dual and your plurals that we are already familiar with. Just a point for you to note regarding the mudaf ilahi. Mudaf ilahi is the second reason why an ism is in jar status. So if an ism is in jar, and it is, you find it is mudafile, that's one reason. The second, uh, first reason, of course, it is that it follows a harf of jar. So please note that, harf of jar, and then you have your ism majroor, which is jar, 
and the mudaf then you have your mudaf ilahi there is no gap allowed in between those two so this subject is relatively easy you just need to pay attention to the arab of the word and you'll be able to recognize either it as a harf of jar or it is mudaf ilahi of course it can be copying an adjective which is mudaf ilahi or it's following a harf of jar but just trace it back and so it's relatively easy again just for your information inshallah i'm sure you remember from this before i mentioned it before that there are eight grammatical reasons why an ism is in the rafa uh, and there are 12 grammatical reasons why an ism is in nasab and there are only two grammatical reasons why an ism is in the jar the mudaf so the mudafila has been taken care of it basically can be definite or indefinite but it's always jar. So that's the only two points I need to remember about it. What about the mudaf? What are the details of the mudaf? First and foremost, as a reminder, it does not have al. So you note that there is no al here at the beginning. Second thing, it will not have tanween. What do I mean, but it will not have tanween? We mean that the arab will be light. It could be rafa, nasab, or jar. It doesn't matter, but the arab will be light. By light, I mean that it will not have tanween if the word originally has tanween. Please note that. The originally has tanween, it will not have tanween. It will, the tanween will be removed, like we saw right at the beginning when we added al. Similar thing, of course, there is no al here. The tanween will be simply removed, and we'll be left with tu, ta, or ti. So you can see here baitun. This is your standard baitan, baitin. In order for it to be acting like a mudaf, then what we have to do is we have to put the single vowel sign on it. So it will be dhamma. Fatha or Kasra. Let me illustrate that with an example for you. Look at the three sentence examples. First one I have, Hada Baitun. This is a house. Very easy, I hope, now for you to recognize what's going on here and also to identify that this is in the Rafa status. So we put an up arrow for Rafa. The second one, Ra'aitu Baitan. I saw a house. I'm sure you can recognize that this is in the Nasab status. Nasab status. And the last one, Sallaytu fi baitin. I prayed in a house. I prayed in a house. So this is now in jar. So you can see that very easily. Why is it in jar? Because of fi. Now instead of saying a house, I want to say somebody's house, whoever that person is. So it will have to become an idafa. What will happen? So please pay attention to the, uh, the Arab. We have rafa, nasab, and jar for the word bait. What happens when we put it into an idafa construct? So instead of saying this is a house, I want to say this is the teacher's house. The teacher's house. I will say Hada Baitul Muallimi. I hope you can see that. What's happened to Baitun is become Baitu and because it's becoming an idafa construct. Then if I want to say I saw the teacher's house, I was passing by, I saw the teacher's house. How would I say that? Ra'aitu Baita. Baita now because it's mudaf, right? And then it becomes, of course, Baita al muallimi. So mudaf ilahi is as it is. And then I prayed in the teacher's house. I was there with him and it's time for salah came. So I prayed in the teacher's house. Sallaytu fi Baitil muallimi. Baitil muallimi. I hope you can recognize that the Arab now is Rafa, Nasab, or Jar for the word bait. So the Arab is this, it can be for the mudaf, not mudaf ilahi, we've done already. Mudaf, the first part can be Rafa, Nasab, or Jar. It can be any, but the Arab must be light. So we will still say it is Rafa, we'll still say it's Nasab or Jar, but it will not take Tanween. So it will lose its Tanween and we'll end up with the U, A, E sound depending on the word, of course. So we've seen that the Mudaf can be Rafa, Nasab, or Jar, but it cannot have Tanween. So the Arab becomes light. It is the mudaf ilayhi that is always in the jar status, and that's it. Whereas the mudaf can be any, you just remove the tanween if the word originally has tanween. So before we look at other words, what happens to them when they don't have tanween, etc., let's understand what we mean by the arab becoming light as opposed to heavy. Arab, heavy, light. If you recall this chart when which we uh, summarized all the different types of categories of isms and how they decline in the Arabic language of the ones we've studied. At the bottom, we had the special, uh, which are highlighted in green. And then on the top, we've got our uh, standard three types. Then we've got our fully, partly, and non-declining. 
Now, if you note with the fully, we have the tanwin. But on the dual, we have an N at the end. Please make a note of the N, N, Noon, with the Fatha. And of course, in the sound feminine plural, we have Atun, again, it's Tanween. So what will happen if they were to become Mudaf? So this is where we're going to focus our discussion for the next few minutes to understand exactly what is going on. So when the word has Tanween at the end, what happens? The Tanween, if you look at the English transliteration I've written here for you, you will note that there's an N sound right at the end. Muslimun, Musliman, Muslimin, Muslimatun, Muslimatan, Muslimatin. Please pay attention to the English transliteration, which you will see. And now look at the, it being opened up. So Tanween, I've mentioned before in the introductory session, is really the Noon Sakin. Okay, that same sound being produced. So Muslimun, which is written here for you, is exactly the same as this in terms of reading. Of course, the top one is the correct way of writing it. So you have Muslimun. Musliman, Muslimin, Muslimatun, Muslimatan, Muslimatin. What if I remove the end sound? So again, I want you to do, go for a leap of imagination and imagine that I'm going to cut this off now. So if I remove the end sound, what am I left with? Well, you should have worked it out already. I'm left with Muslimu, Muslima, Muslimi, Muslimatu, Muslimata, Muslimati. So when it has tanween, it is the standard called heavy. When it loses the tanween, it is called light. So the first version on the top is your heavy version, and the second version is your light version, i.e. it loses its tanween. The standard is to have tanween. When it loses it, it becomes light. And this is exactly what we did with the example with baytun. If you remember earlier, we said, هذا بيت muallimi. This is the teacher's house. And we said, رأيت بيت muallimi. I saw the teacher's house and saw light to fee by till I prayed in the teacher's house. So you can see here, I have to make it light. And this is the condition for something to be mudaf. It has to lose its tanween if the word originally has tanween and to become light. And that's what we mean by the Arab being light. So please pay attention to this. An ism, as I told you right from the beginning, 85% of them in the standard form will take tanween. Of course, with dual and plural, we know something different. Or it can also take al, and then the tanween is gone. So if you see an ism that normally has tanween, does not have one, and there's no al there, most likely it is mudaf. Especially if you find the after it, a ism in jar status. And that's how you identify the mudaf, mudaf ilahi relatively easily. Even with words that don't change their endings and so on, that's how you recognize it, inshallah ta'ala. So what is light and heavy in the dual? Dual doesn't have tanween. We know that. You can easily see the noon at the end. So we have Muslimani, Muslimaini, Muslimaini, Muslimatani, Muslimataini, Muslimataini. Again, if you're not familiar with this, go back to the Muslim table. Now, again, if you see at the end here, I've rewritten it down in English transliteration. If I were to take off the N sound at the end, what am I left with? Please read it out now without the ending. So what are you left with? In the first one, you're left with Muslima elongated sound and then we have muslimai muslimai and in the feminine we have exactly the same thing muslimata muslimatai muslimatai this is light so the dual the noon going it makes it light and this is where people get lots of confusion because they think the word muslimai is a different word it is not it is dual all it has done is lost the noon of arab the n sound at the end has gone so muslimai is dual in nasab or jar status. Okay, if you see that, most likely it is mudaf. So this is again a very, very important lesson for you to recognize it. So it is with the duals, the normal is there with ani and aini. When it loses the noon sound, it becomes light. Now it can become mudaf. Otherwise, you cannot make it mudaf. The mudaf has to be light. So pay attention here. I'm using the word Muslim in the dual form in as a mudaf. In the first example I have, the two Muslims of Egypt came. Ja'a Muslima. There's no ni there. Ja'a Muslima Misra. Second one. Ra'aitu. Muslimani Muslimaini. It becomes Muslimai Misra. The third example. Salamtu. I gave salam. Ala on Muslimai. Otherwise, if it wasn't Mudaf, it would be Ala Muslimaini. Okay, so it, the noon has disappeared. Ala Muslimai Misra. There's no noon here. And that is now Mudaf. So in the dual, 
the noon will be removed when it is mutaf. Now we're left with sound masculine plural and sound feminine plural. In the sound masculine plural, we have a noon at the end, which you can see obviously muslimuna. So if again we do the same thing, we will remove the noon sound. Again, muslimatun, I'm sure you know now, tun has a noon sound at the end. So if I remove the n sound, please note muslimatun, even though it ends with tanween, it does not decline like muslimun, musliman, muslimin. Is muslimatun, muslimatin, muslimatin. This is the special case because it is sound feminine plural. So if I take the n out of all of these, I am left with muslimu, no noon, muslimi. Again, muslimina becomes muslimi. And then we have muslimi. And then we have muslimatu, muslimati, muslimati. So the light version now can become mudaf. We have to remove the n sound at the end of these and it can become mudaf. This is exactly what I mean by light in the sound masculine plural and also in the sound feminine plural. Inshallah, you can see in the examples on the screen how I use the similar structure, inshallah, to explain what's going on. So, Jaa came, Muslimu, no noon. Jaa Muslimu, Misra. The Muslims of Egypt came. Ra'aitu Muslimi, Misra. I saw the Muslims of Egypt. Salamtu, ala Muslimi, Misra. I gave salam to the Muslims of Egypt. And of course, the feminine one at the end, just to illustrate the example for you. Ra'aitu Muslimati, Misra. I saw the Muslims of Egypt again, bracket feminine. You can see how if it has to become mudaf, the dual and the plural, the N sound will remove. And this is what we mean by light. So please pay attention to this, inshallah, because you have to have a very sharp eye to recognize these missing things. But don't worry, it is only with practice that you get them. And after practicing a couple of times, you will become very familiar with it. Alhamdulillah, this is table you should be 100% familiar with. If you haven't, go through lesson one to four. This table is so important to your studies. If you memorize this table, write it out a couple of times, you will never regret it. If you don't, you will struggle in your studies. All I can do is appeal to you. I cannot force you to do anything, inshallah, only advice from my own personal experience. And I hope, inshallah, ta'ala, you will take my words seriously. Now, this is your standard, we can call it heavy if you like, your standard Arab. And now this is your light Arab. Exactly the same table. All I've removed is the N sound at the end. So again, rewrite this table a couple of times, inshallah, and you'll be able to recognize hundreds of words when they come through as a mudaf. Otherwise, you'll be lost. So this table again is important. Please take a look at it. Let's read it together. Muslimu, Muslima, Muslimi. Muslima, for the dual here. Muslima, Muslimai, Muslimai. Muslimu, Muslimi, Muslimi. Muslimatu, Muslimata. Muslimati, Muslimata, Muslimatai, Muslimatai, Muslimatu, Muslimati, Muslimati. Again, remember for it to be mudaf, it needs to have no alif lam, no tanween, or if it's dual, no n sound, or if it's sound masculine plural, no n sound. Please remember this point, inshallah ta'ala, and the subject of uh, uh, the mudaf will become very easy for you. Murakabi Dafi using partly declining words as mudaf. If you recall our discussion on partly flexible, they play an important point here, which I want to share with you. Inshallah, this will help you again avoid some confusion. So partly declining, what do we know about them? They don't take tanween. And in the jar status, there is no kasra. It is usually with the fatha, which you can see here. So Ibrahimu, Ibrahima, Ibrahima, Zainabu, Zainaba, Zainaba. Akbaru, Akbara, Akbara. Masajidu, Masajida, Masajida. So Masajida, of course, at the end means mosques. So again, you can see the words are illustrating those two points, not tanween and no kasra in the jar status. So if you wanted to say in Arabic, for example, in mosques, fi masajida, fi harf of jar, go back to the previous two lessons. But if you want to say in the mosque, if the word can take al, it is no longer partly flexible. It becomes fil masajidi. I hope this is clear. However, please note, words like Ibrahim and Zainab will never take al because they are proper nouns. But Akbar and Masajid and many other words like that can take al. So if it takes al, then it's 
partly declining quality will be removed. It will become like any other normal. We have it here, fil masajidi. I hope this is clear, inshallah. When the partly declining words can become mudaf, what happens? Let's take an example, inshallah, here. We have fi masajida, which is 100% correct, in mosques. But if I wanted to say in Arabic, I prayed in the mosques of Egypt. Now that is a mudaf mudafilahi construct. Here I'm saying, sallaytu, I prayed, I prayed, fi masajidi. Please note, masajidi, not masajida. Okay, misra. Sallaytu fi masajidi, misra. I prayed in the mosques of Egypt. Why has it taken a kasra? Exactly the same thing happens when you put al to a partly declining words. It loses its partly declining quality and becomes like normal. So if a word which is partly declining can take al or can become a mudaf, in that case it will become like fully flexible and it will take a kasra. And please note that very, very important point. Mudaf, mudaf ilayhi, even with partly declining words, the mudaf will take kasra. And this is a very, very subtle point, not really covered in most of the books until you get to sort of intermediate and advanced level. And hence, it causes some confusion among students. So please note these points, inshallah. Again, my intention is to share with you the most important points so you can use this information, inshallah ta'ala. And that's all we really, in terms of details that you know about this subject, very simple. Once you do it a couple of times, it will become in your knowledge base, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, that is the core information we need to know about the mudaf and the mudaf ilayhi. Mudaf ilayhi, I remind you, can be definite or indefinite, but it's always in the jar status. If the mudaf ilayhi is definite, the whole construct will be translated as definite. If it's indefinite, you can translate the whole construct as indefinite. As for the mudaf, which is the first part, it can be rafa, nasab, or jar. It does not matter. It depends on the role that it is playing in the sentence. However, if the word has tanween, it will, the tanween will be removed and it will become light. If the word is dual, the noon sound at the end will be removed. If it's sound masculine and plural, the noon sound will be removed. And if it is sound feminine plural, the tanween will be removed, similar to what we have seen in the examples. So that's all you really, really need to know. Now, if in your mind comes up the question, what about the other types of words? Well, the other types that we looked at so far, they don't really have tanween or n sound. So there's no need to change them. It is only these that we need to worry about the issues of Arab. So please note these points down, inshallah ta'ala, you're going to come across it again and again. That's all I want to come across in this first session on the lesson number nine, is introduce you to the mudaf mudaf ilayhi, inshallah. I hope I've covered most of the information and you've retained some. In the next part of lesson number nine, we're going to look at how a pronoun can become mudaf ilayhi, and we can then start saying things like in Arabic, my house, his house, his pen, Etc. Etc. <laughs>